Hey guys, XSR Detroit here. Uh, today we're going to be looking at a single cable charging system for your phones uh, for the XSR 900. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to do this. This is just the way I do it. Um, so as you see here, I have a RAM mount uh, holding the phone in position. I like setting it up horizontally so I can see my uh, instruments and the phone if I want to look down. I like I use this 99% of the time for GPS and nothing else really. But as you see, I've got my charge cable here. It's a USB-C. Um, the cool thing is, is not only does it charge my phone, but I have a GoPro mount here. Uh, so when I run my second camera setup, if I want to charge the camera or anything, uh, it's good to go. So uh, basically what I have set up is the cable itself is going through here underneath this tank panel and it goes to an adapter uh, from the tender and of course the tender goes to the battery but it is the end of the season you know the bikes it's time to take the, uh, some parts off the bike it's time to get the battery on the tender uh, so I figured this would be a good opportunity to show you guys a very simple uh, charging system for this bike. I've used it pretty much since I've had the bike and I've had no issues whatsoever. So uh, let's get the seat off and get the tank panels removed. To remove the seat, you simply move this plastic flap, insert P, twist, and the seat lifts right off. Now that we have the seat off, um, we have to remove this trim from the gas tank before we can remove the panels. So where I like to start is with these push pins. Uh, as you can see on the other side, I already misplaced one, so I'm gonna have to get some more of these. And the thing to remember is uh, you have push pins on the back here, but you also have push pins on the front. Um, the smaller ones go on the front. These are a little bigger, so all these push pins are uh, front to the back are not the same size uh, so make sure when you're putting all this stuff back together that you have the right push pins in the right location otherwise they're not gonna fit I mean you'll pretty much know right away that you you've got it wrong but just for reference smaller ones up front slightly bigger ones back here to pop these push pins you simply have to take a pick or a small pop it in and then you should be able to pull it out with your finger With the push pins removed on the front and rear of the tank, we're ready to move on to these fasteners. Uh, they're metric Allen fasteners. They're four millimeters. So let's pop these off and this tank trim is gonna come right off. And we're off. With the tank trim removed, these tank panels just lift right off the bike. Just like that. With both of the tank panels removed, uh, it's a lot easier to see what we're working with here. We have the charge cable itself coming down here through the frame, and normally it would be behind this curtain portion and all this wiring would be tucked away so you wouldn't see anything. And this is the adapter for the USB coming off the battery tender. Um, I've ridden in wet weather, uh, I've had zero issues with it, it's been working great so far. They cost around $10, I'll post a, a link uh, in the description for you guys if you guys are interested in picking one up. But yeah, that's it. It's super basic. It's super stealthy too. It's You can't see any of this with the tank panels on, which I really like. And uh, like I said, it's no big deal. Now that it's the uh, cold time of the year, I can take this off. I can plug it right into the, the tender over here on the wall and uh, we'll be all good as far as the battery goes. Now the battery's coming out anyway because this whole tail portion of the bike is coming off. But uh, yeah. Um, real quick, I wanted to give you guys a, a short review on this X-Grip uh, RAM cell phone mount. Uh, I don't know if you can see it that well, but it just clamps onto the handlebar. So this uh, will work on a lot of different motorcycles, not just the XSR. I just like putting it uh, right in the center. You know, this thing moves too, it tilts and it's adjustable, but it's very, very firm. 
So unless you have the phone in there, it's kind of difficult to move, which is what you want. I mean, you don't want this thing all loosey-goosey on you. As you can see, it's very, very solid. Overall, I've really, uh, really liked it. I haven't had any slips or have a phone pop out or anything. So yeah, this thing does the job. But all right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Um, this is the, I guess, the unofficial start of the winter bike mod series I'm going to start doing. Uh, yeah, I can't wait. I've got, uh, I already have some parts here. Some stuff has to go out for powder coating, but there's just a lot of exciting things coming. I'm filming everything for you guys. I have some awesome how-tos coming up, especially a headlight how-to, which I'm really excited for because we're gonna get rid of that halogen ball and we're gonna bump up to some LEDs, which is gonna be fantastic. Get rid of these <laughs> stock, terrible Yamaha turn signals. Uh, I can't believe I still have these on the bike. Uh, of all the mods that I've done so far, I can't believe they're still around. But as always, guys, thank you for checking out the video. Please subscribe if you like what I do. Throw me a like. If you have any questions, please comment. But yeah, as always, guys, uh, ride fast, ride naked, wear your helmet, and I'll see you in the next video.